Sunday versus Notre Dame, and that featured a vintage performance from Tiana Manakahia. Yeah, Manakahia was spectacular in that game against Notre Dame. She almost came out of it with a triple-double, had 19 points, 11 assists, and was one shy of that triple-double with nine rebounds. But her play was superb. They're on a two-game winning streak themselves after losing a tough game against Clemson in OT. But this is going to be a big game, and she's going to have to step up this evening. Monacahi also a career high five threes in that win over Notre Dame. Quentin Hillsman team in the middle of a bracing stretch, four games over an eight day period. But at nine and three overall, identical record as Nell Fortner and the Yellow Jackets, who had their bye this weekend. They last played Thursday in a road win over the Miami Hurricanes. Georgia Tech has won the last two in this series. But now, having won five straight and a 7-2 and two in the ACC, they're not a secret anymore. And that target on their back getting bigger by the day, Fallon. It is getting bigger by the day. And you're going to get the best from these teams as, as we get into crunch time and as teams have to make up games and play a lot of games within a short amount of time of rest or turnover. And Akahia Trapp gets it away to Cardoso, but she sails the skip pass to Priscilla Williams for the turnover. And who would have thought, you know, Georgia Tech, usually a defensively, they don't come out that aggressive with a press or that type of pressure. But that was a good decision by Coach, Coach Fortner. Since they didn't get that jump ball, she probably planned for it. And now Georgia Tech creates a turnover and has the basketball. And no surprise for Georgia Tech that Syracuse comes out with pressure as we look at the Yellow Jackets starting five. Lowell McQueen gets a second straight start as there's a travel called on the freshman. Lodemai Lawton, in, the junior from Helsinki, Finland, sixth in the ACC, averaging 16 points a game. And for Syracuse, in addition to Manakahia, Camilla Cardoso, the 6'7 freshman, back-to-back -back ACC Freshman of the Week awards, and nine blocks in addition to 18 points in that win over Notre Dame Sunday. Yeah, Cardoso, she's having a fantastic freshman campaign. I mean, she's 6'7", great size. She is a block. She's leading the ACC in block shots. You can't shoot too many over her. So that's something Georgia Tech's going to have to be prepared for if they go in that pain against Syracuse. Fletcher on the reset. Kubai launches and hits. Ooh. Just a fourth <laughs> three of the season for the senior Lorella Kubai. I tell you, she will surprise you. But that's something Georgia Tech can have in their repertoire and use in this game. They can bring Kubai out, especially get Cardozo out of that paint. And now a long two from Kira Fletcher to make it 5 nothing Jackets. How impressive has she been to start, especially we said in the beginning with the last two games. But her three-point shooting has been tremendous to start the season or since she's come back into play after that ankle injury. She was allergic to long jumpers <laughs> her first two years, but has found her touch as a senior out of Warren. In Michigan. Lewis works on Lawton in, and it turns into a run out for Fletcher. Tries to hit Lawton in ahead of the pack, got deflected right back to Fletcher, just like she designed it. I mean, and Quentin Hillsman just... calls timeout. <laughs> did she just get her own assist on that one? That was a nice one by Kiara Fletcher. So a 7 0 start for the Yellow Jackets in the opening two minutes here in our first quarter from Atlanta as we've hit timeout. Sharp start for the Yellow Jackets, who lead 7-0 as we look at our tail of the tape in this matchup of the third and fourth place teams in the ACC. Georgia Tech leads the ACC in scoring defense. But Syracuse third in the league in shooting percentage defense. They also lead the ACC foul and are third nationally in blocks. So when you go inside the paint, if you're wearing white and gold tonight, you yeah. better be ready. You better be ready. And with Cardozo in that paint at 6-7, I mean, she's clearing it out. We talked about the last game against Notre Dame. She had a career high nine blocks. And I think that's position fourth in ACC history with that many blocks. And here is Cardozo. Got the deep seal on Kubai and put Syracuse on the board. And during that Quentin Hillsman timeout, he subbed out Tiana Matakakia and brings in his sophomore Talia Washington. And there's a turnover in backcourt. 
As we see Priscilla Williams on the balance beam there at the scorer's table, getting the turnover for the Orange. Oh, yeah, but this move by Cardozo was, we talk about her footwork at 6'7". Six, six, she is very mobile, very agile, and we need to watch that matchup tonight between her and Lorella Kubai as well as Armosa. Those are the two post players for Georgia Tech that are going to have the duty of Gardner at different times, but I'm, I'm sure the majority of that is going to go to Armosa. Cardoso leads the ACC 61% field goal shooting. Also, Emily Engsler is in off the timeout. She is the super sum for the Orange, a double-double on the year. Has to throw out long to Fletcher. Another lob into Cardoso, misses that time. Kubai leads the ACC in rebounds. She can't clamp it clean, but she does get possession for Tech. Yeah, no, she was trying to get herself another rebound, and that was just great positioning. Good defense by Armosa, just standing her ground in position. And fortunately, Cardozo missed that shot. Very veteran Georgia Tech backcourt with Lawton and Fletcher, able to break the pressure. But this is going to be something critical right now. Georgia Tech trying to find ways to score in their half-court sets against the zone of Syracuse. We know they have size, but they have to continue to be aggressive in the paint. Dropped off to Hermosa in the paint. No good. Kubai flies in for the rebound. She is so athletic for 6'5". Lawton and Reigns the three. And there's Kubai for the offensive rebound. Hey, what an easy way to get that one. Get an offensive rebound, just keep moving, and you'll get some points. She is a beast on the boards. The senior from Tyranny, Italy, 12.1 a game. That's also ninth in the nation. Yeah, it's very impressive. We see Lewis going in aggressively. <laughs> Cardozo right there to clean it up. And if you're 6'7", it's not hard to get those types of offensive rebounds, but she is very good at rebounding the basketball. Has all four of the Orange's points. Lazy pass intercepted by Stratmana. She shovels to Washington for the layup. And that's what you cannot do. Coach Fortner talked about Syracuse's full court pressure, and Georgia Tech has to play through it and play smart and get the basketball past half court without turning it over. Catching up with Nell Fortner, second-year coach of the Jackets yesterday. She said against that famous Syracuse pressure, they have to be bold. They can't be shy trying to break it. Right. And you have to be aggressive. That's with anything in the zone, but you have to be smart. You're not going to beat it off the dribble. you got to move and make the right pass. And if Georgia Tech continues to do that and keep their composure, they should be okay in trying to get in their half-court sets. Freshman Aaliyah Love subs in off the bench for Lawton in off that jump ball tie-up. Arrow to Georgia Tech on the first block from Cardoso. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> yep. She is precocious, which is another word for 6-7. <laughs> McQueen on the dance. Shot clock at two. Kubai has to heave, and it doesn't draw a rim. Shot clock violation on the Jackets. And that's what Georgia Tech cannot do. They know that Syracuse is going to come out of their full court pressure and play in a zone when they're in the half court set. But they have to continue to move and try and get something early in that shot clock and not let it wind down. Manakahia works the pick and roll with Cardoso, who gets the roll. And after that 7-0 start, Syracuse finding its offense to make it a one-point game. Right back in it. And Mahikaya, she is capable of making those types of plays. She is this team's assist leader. And uh, that was just a great pass to Cardoza for the easy lay-in. Meanwhile, a hard take by Aaliyah Love. And she draws a pair of free throws. And you just see Mahikaya comes off that screen really hard, and Fletcher makes a nice pass to cut in Cardoza, an easy layup for the 6'7 post player for Syracuse. I mean, she makes it look easy at that size and her mobility. You notice on that replay, Mahikaya barely had to look. She did. I mean, she, she didn't have to look. I mean, she's so impressive with her passing. She had a triple, almost had a triple-double last game against Notre Dame, but had 11 assists, and she is leading this team since ACC play. Her assists have improved, averaging around nine assists a game. So she's going to dish it. We know she can score it due to her past performances, but we have to expect to see a big game from her if Syracuse wants to get a road win against Georgia Tech. She's this team's leader. She makes them go. A two of two free throw trip for Aaliyah Love. Jackets by three as we approach the midway mark of our first quarter. Anakahia hedged all the way out to the midcourt line. Splits it to Stroutman for the three. 
Angsler races after him, but last off Emily Angsler's hands. Georgia Tech ball. Yeah, Stramina, she can shoot that three. She's very capable of knocking that corner three down. And Georgia Tech has to be aware of that great pressure on Maikaia, but they were able to pass out and almost got a, a good look at the three point at the three point line. It feels like Dignus Stramina has been with the Orange since they were still in the Big East. <laughs> Making her 109th career start today as Fletcher on the pull up, rattles it down over Cardoso. Nice. And we know Kiera Fletcher is not afraid to try and knock some shots down over Biggs in the paint. She likes to bang. What's impressive is that her three-point shooting has just improved, but she has no problem going in the paint. She is a bigger guard. Definitely profiles as a power guard. Here is Kubai from the elbow. And that's what you said, Andy, was going to be critical. We expected it from Armosa hitting that free throw line jump shot. But that's going to be something that the post players for Georgia Tech are going to have to key in. They're going to be open around that free throw line. They're going to have to knock those shots down. 6-0 Georgia Tech run. Straubman them to Manakahia on the curl. Her runner grazes the iron. Yeah, that was a tough shot. Amaikaya just trying to go off that runner off the one foot, but she's capable of knocking shots down. But that was a, a tough one right there at 5 6 going in that paint. Kubai skips. McQueen spots up and rains down the three. And if the lefty McQueen is knocking down that three point shot, then it could be a long day for Syracuse. The freshman has been some, uh, impressive all season, been in and out the starting lineup, but continues just to play hard. And it's, we say as quick as lightning, she'll go 100 miles an hour. I know sometimes Coach Fortner wants her to slow down, but if she's knocking down that three-point shot, that's a great look for her. And the freshman from Florence, South Carolina. Last year's South Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year. And there's another Georgia Tech freshman, Love, with the steal. And Love is going to be critical. She's long, lean, capable of playing inside and out, can knock down the three-point line, but has long arms to get deflections, just like she was able to on that pass to get that steal for Georgia Tech. Kubai with the pump. Yes, the blow by on Cardoso. Tough shot under the backboard. And it's cleared by the orange. Manakahia, no look to Stramana all the way through. Stramana, man, she was running the floor and finishes with the right hand. Nice finish by her. She's, she's incredible at her size just to be able to move. And Fletcher <laughs> with the answer on the secondary transition. Yeah, Kiara Fletcher, we talked about it. Her outside shooting has improved tremendously. She continues to show us why and how with that last shot. Approaching two minutes to play in the first quarter. Fletcher can't finish. And here comes Love. Love will take it all the way in, draws the foul, and one. And that's something Aaliyah Love is capable of doing. The freshman, she is agile. She can handle the ball. Nice job of, of handling the pressure and going coast to coast and is able to finish with the contact. Great finish over Stramina with the and one. You don't expect that kind of conviction on the break from a freshman. No, I mean, she doesn't play like a freshman, and she is a key piece and a big asset for Georgia Tech and Coach Fortner coming off of that bench. She doesn't play like a freshman, very composed. Can't finish the end one. Maeva Jaldi Tomdi, the defensive rebound for the Orange. And we thought coming in that Aaliyah Love might play some substantial minutes because of that size, length, and shooting ability that she brings to the four spot. Right. And it's a very long Syracuse zone. Right. And I think it's so important because she can play multiple positions. And when you have players on your bench that are capable of doing that, that makes you more of an impressive team, I think, on the defensive and offensive end. And another Syracuse turnover as Manakahia unable to hit Williams on the back cut. And that's freshman against freshman. We know these players probably competed in the national AAU circuit uh, when they were in high school, but that's a, a, a matchup that we need to continue to watch between those two. Another slow first quarter for the Orange. They trailed Notre Dame on Sunday, 28-15 at the end of the opening quarter. Won that one, 81-69. There's a block on Anaya Boyd yeah. off the bench for the Yellow Jackets. Lewis in traffic. Kubai goes up right, alters the shot, and Georgia Tech pulls it away. And that was great to see. Anaya Boyd gets blocked on one end, and then she's right back on defense, getting a hand up and getting a deflection on the opposite end. 
Georgia Tech playing without Sarah Bates, his three-point specialist for his second straight game. Kubai into traffic, takes a hit and draws the foul. But that was a great job by Kubai. She has to be aggressive and penetrate, drive to the paint, get these post players for Syracuse in foul trouble if she can. Because if Georgia Tech, that's their bread and butter, being aggressive, and they know Syracuse is going to continue to play his own and make it tough for the post to score inside. Kubai, certainly in line for all ACC. I think that's oh, yeah. a given at this point. The only question, will she move up to that first team all conference line? 12.8 points, league leading 12.1 rebounds per game, and she stretches the Georgia Tech lead to 15. Yeah, they are, or she's just been impressive all season long. And the Jackets force another turnover on the backcourt violation. Right, and you can't, how many post players that you can say an ACC player are just in the country that can defend at the half court against a guard and create a turnover? You know, to, to have that type of pressure and mobility for her size is just so impressive and just is a huge asset for Georgia Tech to have. And that's why she's really defensively and as a rebounder, you never question Lorella Kubai. But this season, she's just really stepped up her game on the offensive end, averaging a double-double. Oh, and Georgia Tech catches a break there as Lewis tried to jump the passing lane. McQueen picked up the dribble. Her teammates didn't realize. And you saw Nell Fordner <laughs> urging her players from the sideline, give her some help. <laughs> Yeah, you always got to keep your eyes open. Those guards sometimes, as a post or a wig, you're just looking like, no, you handle it. Just pass it to me. McQueen tight ropes the baseline, hits Lawton, feeds Boyd for another three. It's a fourth triple of the first quarter, and this one from Anaya Boyd to make it 28-10 Tech. And that's what Coach Fortner has expected from Anaya Boyd. You know, she needed to get into some shape, had a bit of an injury from high school. But now that she's looking like she's getting into game form, game shape, that was a nice looking three point shot. And the runner falls by Monacahia to beat the first quarter buzzer. But Georgia Tech ripping down the nets in the opening 10 minutes, 10 of 15 from the floor, and a 16 point lead through one in McCamish. Now that twine down there on the right may still be hot to the touch, Fallon. Georgia Tech smoking the nets to 10 of 15 shooting in the first half. A 28-12 lead, Kira Fletcher, 4 of 4. Oh, no, she has been hot to start this game. In that first quarter, she was hitting all types of outside shots and then even giving herself her own assist and finishing with that layup. But she has been tremendous starting this game and what we talked about so far so much this season with her is her improvement with her outside shooting. It's just been very impressive. Coming off 12 points and a career high eight assists in Georgia Tech's last outing versus Miami. And somebody who had to labor through a high ankle sprain that caused her to miss the first five games of the season. Yeah, and you could tell each game she was cheering her teammates on that she was out, but she wanted to get out there to help. But we have to tip our hat to McQueen. She was impressive and played very well in her absence. But it's great to have Kiera Fletcher back for this Georgia Tech ball club. That was Priscilla Williams sailing in for two. And Priscilla Williams has been quiet. She's not really known for driving like that, but can and capable. She can shoot that three right now being fourth in ACC play behind the arc. Jaldi Tomdi to the floor for that rebound, but she throws away the outlet. And an unforced error by the Orange gives it back to Tech. And Zaldi Tomdi, that was a great hustle. It's just unfortunate that ball went out of bounds. Lewis was trying to catch it, but just wasn't fast enough to get it before he went out of bounds on the sideline. So you're Quentin Hillsman, Fallon. What do you do to make Georgia Tech more uncomfortable in the half court? You know, I think it just, they're going to stick with the zone. Syracuse is known for a zone, so they're not going to come out of it. But they have to at least get some double teams. That was good heads up defense, but you got a rebound. Well, and Fletcher follows her own miss. <laughs> you can't let guards like Kiara Fletcher, even though we know she's capable. I'm sure that was on the scouting report. But you cannot let these guards go in and get these boards. Pass tipped away, and Lewis leads the break. Now give Georgia Tech credit. They made some tough shots in that first quarter. Lewis was wide open but couldn't convert the three. Yeah, and Lewis is capable of knocking down three. She was this team's leading scorer and a, a first-team All-ACC selection a year ago and a preseason candidate. So she can score in bunches. Just pretty quiet to start this game. Launton and no good on the pull-up. 
And the Jackets have missed their first four from the floor to begin the quarter. Seems like they cooled off a bit. Strauman on the trail three, doesn't get it. But Syracuse, unfortunately, still can't find it. And the Orange now 7 of 18 for 38%. And this is what Georgia Tech cannot do. In this zone, they cannot get stagnant. They have to move. And that's just a big-time shot. You know, Kara Fletcher going 101 and finding her spot in the zone and just rising up and knocking down that J. That was an impressive shot. She is 5'9", but she plays so much bigger, it seems, than her height. She does, and very confident. She has no problem going in the paint. She's been doing that for her third, first three seasons here at Georgia Tech. And I think it's just made her more comfortable with that outside shot. If you got the outside sh shot going, you can do anything in the paint. Meanwhile, it's been a struggle for Kira Lewis. She's missed her first seven from the floor. Kira Lewis surpassed 1,000 career points in that win over Notre Dame. She did, and she can score, but she can be streaky at times and, and just not be as consistent. And I know that's something that Coach Hillsman just wants from her because he knows what she's capable of doing. But she will continue to shoot until she sees it knocked down. Strauman to block the layup attempt of Lawton. And Jaldi Tomdi with the catch and shoot. She can't get the touch. Yeah, Jaldi Tomdi, that was a nice shot. Nice form. It looked like it was going to hit. But again, Syracuse just can't find the basket. But they're getting good looks. Georgia Tech has just been fortunate that Syracuse has not been able to knock down those open shots. It seems like Syracuse hasn't found a lot of shots in the rhythm of their offense. And on the dribble drive, Fletcher gets fouled. And when you're as hot as Fletcher going to the hole and penetrating, you're going to get calls like that. That was a great decision off that screen by Armosa. She comes around, and that's a foul right there. Jaldi Tomdi raised her hand to say, that was me. But that was a great decision by Kiara Fletcher just to continue to penetrate and draw the foul. And now she's at the free throw line for two shots. Foul is Jaldi Tomdi's second. So she has to the bench. Cardoso back in. Fletcher, an 80% free throw shooter this year. Just like all of her shooting has improved. And, you know, in, in seasons past, Georgia Tech has struggled from the free throw line, especially from their guards. And that's been something critical that has uh, been, has cost them some games. But the last couple of seasons, you've seen the gradual improvement. And this season between Kiara Fletcher and Lottman improving from the free throw line and their shooting improving, it's, it's been, it's worked wonders for this team. And it's been a key reason why, this, why they're, they're on this five game winning streak. As we said, Georgia Tech's longest ACC win streak since the end of the 2012 season. That's a long time, and that was a good team. They, I think that team went to the tournament. They sure did. Wrap around pass, Monica here to Cardozo. Oh, is that pretty? <laughs> she makes it look so pretty, and you don't mind seeing it. She may not be getting buckets like she's capable of, but she's going to dish it. And now Williams for three. Fletcher, the rebound. As Georgia Tech survives that turnover. They do, and that that make allowed Syracuse to get back in their full court press, and they were able to get a steal. Just unfortunate, Williams was not able to knock down that three-point shot, but that's what Syracuse wants to do against Georgia Tech. Hermosa got the seal, stuck from behind by Engsler, but some contact, and they call the foul on the senior Emily, the junior Emily Engsler. Yeah, Engsler's looking like that was all ball. Where's the foul? And it was weird positioning. It looked like Armosa was in the paint and had a wide open look at a layup, especially on that left side. But somehow, Anxler was able to get a block and get a hand on that ball, but is able also draws or commits a foul. That is a stylish face mask from Quentin Hillsman. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, I do. He's always stylish. You know, he's going to come with a little flair every game. You know, you, you can't do the pocket square, <laughs> but you can always move that up to the face mask. I'll tell you uh, what. Yeah, with the dice glasses. If there was one coach in the ACC that you could count on <laughs> to make a face mask look stylish, you knew it would be Coach Q. Yeah, Coach Q. <laughs> Jack is now doubling up the orange. That three, a rainmaker from Priscilla Williams, but she could absolutely put on a show from three the freshman from Branson, Missouri. Yeah, Priscilla Williams, she's capable. Like I said, right now she is fourth in the ACC uh, behind the arc. 
And she is capable of doing that and knocking that shot down. Cardoso, the rebound. Triggers the outlet to Monacahia. Williams, another one. Yes, ma'am. You better find her quick. She's starting to get a rhythm. And this is an, a McDonald's All-American, Jordan Classic candidate. Didn't get to participate in those games because of COVID-19, but she is very capable and has had a great freshman campaign so far. Now Williams, remember, won a perfect six of six from three against Miami back on January the 18th. Right, and I believe she was perfect in that game, nine for nine yeah. for the field, so she can score it. Cuts the deficit to 10. Shot clock winding down. Fletcher goes to work on Monica. He digs the shoulder in, a heavy offensive rebound, and the stick back by Kubai gets wedged. Possession arrow keeps it with Tech, however. And that was great hustle right there by Kubai. Just couldn't get the layup. Now Priscilla Williams triggering a 6-0 run for the Orange, but the Jackets still lead by 10 here in our second quarter. Tiana Monacahia, the graduate student from Brisbane, Australia. I'm not sure what the exchange rate is from the U.S. to Australia, but I can assure you, Monacahia, she's serving up some dimes. Oh, she's serving up some dimes today, and we're not surprised. She's first in the ACC with assists, and she had that big game against Notre Dame with 11 assists, already has four in this game. Has not scored a lot of points, but she has made her presence known in big ways. And, you know, she can she can play defense, she can steal, get steals, she can score. Tonight, two points, four assists, and one rebound. But she's been impressed with the start of this game, and it's a big reason that Syracuse has been able to make this run. And no surprise, leading the ACC in assists. And she was pulled in the opening two minutes by her head coach, Quentin Hillsman. He knows her, but, you know, this kid is is tremendous and passionate. We, we spoke about it. She spent the 2019-2020 season fighting breast cancer and comes back this season and um, is playing tremendous. And you have to tip your hat to this, you know, student athlete because that's just spectacular and just shows the type of courage and persistence that she has. And she is admired across college basketball and not just for her assists. Kubai's jumper quiets the 6-0 Syracuse run. Angsler with the dump down. Cardoso a heavy uh, fight for it. Bodies thrashing around inside there. Kubai and Cardoso both hit the floor, but the Orange retain. <laughs> and you see it's getting a little ticky-tack down there amongst the bigs. Cardoso's looking like, don't hang on me, get off of me. <laughs> But I'm just surprised she missed that shot. Great defense by Lorella Kubai at the end. But if she misses one and it's four tech players surrounding her, you better get that rebound. <laughs> oh, like you never had your scraps <laughs> when you played. <laughs> I get that, no. I had plenty of those. That's when you know the game's on. <laughs> That's when you have one of those. Off the reversal, yeah, Angsler traveled. traveled, yeah. She took a few too many steps going into that three. You can tell she was ready to let it go. Angsler fourth of the ACC in rebounds, even though she comes off the bench. No, she's averaging a double-double coming off the bench. What, what an asset to have. I mean, she is just... <laughs> aggressive and she just plays hard and we've seen it in this game she doesn't mind playing defense she doesn't mind scrapping she's a hard-nosed player for the Syracuse team Fletcher with 12 first half points draws Williams on the switch now Kubai measures up Cardoso goes for the step back and leaves it short Georgia Tech just two of ten in the second quarter after shooting 66% in the first quarter. Yeah, they came out hot, had that 15-point lead, 16-point lead on Syracuse. And you see both teams just hustling and in some turnovers being created, but no one's been able to score since coming out of that timeout. Off the skip, Love splits a pair of defenders and draws the foul. That should be a second on Angsler. Yeah, Angsler just looked a little anxious or a little annoyed on that one when she fouls Love. Nice penetration and really just takes her off the dribble, splits the two, and Angsler with the foul. Nice penetration by the freshman Love. Like I said, she is an aggressive player who does not play like a freshman and just have to see if she could capitalize after drawing that foul and knock down these two free throws. 
It also took some courage to go right at Cardoso. <laughs> it does, and that's what you just can't have fear. Coach Fortner talked about it. They know Cardozo's size. She is a huge presence in that paint, and it can look very intimidating when you see someone in that six seven defending the the basket. But you still have to be aggressive. Play Georgia Tech basketball. Georgia Tech scores in the paint, so they have to continue to be aggressive and try and get points. Love now four of four at the line. Georgia Tech leads by 14. Final two and a half minutes of our first half. Finkley Gotti with the turn and the score. Finkley Gotti, that was impressive. I mean, Syracuse, they have some impressive post players who have good key, good footwork. I guess if you're going against the likes of a Cardoso at practice, it's going to make you a better post. Gotti was an everyday starter last year and has been coming off the bench this season for Quentin Hillsman. Gives them some dependability, though, in reserve. Here's Kubai. Fires out Boyd for three. And the rebound pried away by Williams. And the loose ball foul on the Jackets. Fletcher's first. Yeah, and they were fighting, trying to get that basketball. I'm assuming Kier Fletcher must have gotten a portion of the hand or the wrist for the referee to make to call that foul. Orange have trailed by as many as 18 this first half. They trailed by as many as 15 in the first half versus Notre Dame on Sunday. There's a foul on Kubai. They did. And that game looked like it was out of reach for Syracuse the way Notre Dame was playing, similar to how Georgia Tech played in that first quarter. And, um, you know, I talked to, or we talked to Coach Hillsman earlier about that, and he was basically like, in that first half, it was a tale of two halves. We didn't play hard, and we turned the ball over a lot. And in the second half, they were able to limit the turnovers and finally guarded Notre Dame, where they had a lot of wide open looks. So. They're going to have to pick up that defensive pressure against Georgia Tech and turning the ball off like that. And they force That's not another, great. Yeah, and force another turnover. Ninth of the half for the Orange. And the shooting by quarters right now, you just see the tails of it. Georgia Tech hit a 15 in the first quarter. and second quarter right now, two for 12. So it's going to be key to see if they can end this quarter strong. They need a basket. Williams blocks Fletcher. Stays with Tech, six to shoot. And that was a good penetration. Just too many people. Great defense right there by Williams. She's a 6 2 guard and capable of doing that. And yeah, keeping the arms up and down. How on earth did Love bank that in? Now that was a tough shot. Leaning, falling, and Williams right in her face. Good defense again by Williams. But Aaliyah Love was just able to knock down a better shot. I'll tell you what, there is nothing in the geometry textbook that might explain that shot. No, it doesn't. Sometimes you just can have good defense. It's just better offense. Monica rattles down the three. And Mahikaya, that's what she's capable of doing. You can't leave her open. That wide open shot, she's going to knock that down. She's a solid three-point shooter, shooting about 38% in ACC play. Shot clock is off. Jackets have led throughout the first half. Into the hands of Fletcher. Williams make that Lewis defending. Hermosa raises up and hits. And that was the shot we talked about. You talked about Andy. Hermosa was going to have to knock down those shots, and she knocks down a big one. And it gives Georgia Tech the 13-point lead at halftime. Georgia Tech trying to win a sixth straight in conference and preserve that third-place spot in the ACC. A torrid start for the Yellow Jackets, who lead at 40-27. Our halftime coverage begins after this. Uh, this Tuesday night at the Cambridge Pavilion. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Cambridge Pavilion, where Georgia Tech used a red hot start from the field to take a 40-27 lead over Syracuse. 
Here at halftime, Andy Demetra and Fallon Stokes. And for the Orange, they've wiped out several double-digit deficits in ACC play this year, but another one on their hands tonight, trying to get their offense going in the second half, and perhaps Camilla Cardoso is a good place to start. Yeah, Cardoso is going to have to be the place to start. I mean, she had eight points in that first half, only three rebounds. I don't think she had any blocks yet, which is surprising, but she was at least the one go-to or bright spot in that first half for Sarah she played really hard and played well, and they're going to continue to go to her in the second half because she needs to score points in the paint if they want to get this win on the road. Syracuse's other McDonald's All-American, Priscilla Williams, also had a Kira Fletcher, though, almost perfect from the floor. Oh, she was almost perfect. I mean, she was five of eight, had 12 points in that first half, and is leading Georgia Tech. She's battling with Lorella Kubai right now with the rebound and with six boards. So she was tremendous. And then Lorella Kubai, what more can you say? She's just consistent, 11 points in that first half, even hit a big-time three-point shot, really worked on her outside scoring. And she had four rebounds and a block. So she's continuing to play hard, being aggressive, and really giving Georgia Tech a post presence in this game. Like Cardoso averaging a double-double this season. Georgia Tech, 41st half points, but their leading scorer on the year was held scoreless. Low to my Lawtonen, 0-4 from the floor. But Syracuse's second leading scorer by average, Kira Lewis, was also held without a point and 0-7 of from the floor. And those are two players that both of these teams, and I'm sure for Georgia Tech, Coach Fortner wants Lawtonen to get it going, as well as Coach Hillsman for Syracuse to get Lewis going because those both of those players could be two very bright spots on the offensive end for these teams if they can get something going in the second half. And you know when he glanced at the box score at halftime, Quentin Hillsman said, we got to do something about that rebounding margin. Oh, yeah, they definitely need to. Georgia Tech was getting second chance opportunities and they were able to capitalize on some of those. So that's been critical. Another thing, Syracuse wants to limit their turnovers. They average about 17, a little little over 17 turnovers a game. Right now they're at nine in that first half. So that's going to be key too if they want to make a strong run and cut Georgia Tech's lead or regain the lead in this game. Georgia Tech trying to win a third straight in the series over the Orange. As you look at Lodemai Lawton, who last year at the Dome had 17 points in the first half. Wow. <laughs> Zero in the first half this year. Yeah. Maybe she's just waiting to invert <laughs> things now as Georgia Tech takes possession to start the second half. Yeah, this is going to be impressive, but Lodney needs to see if she can get something going. They need her scoring, her leadership. She hasn't even, we haven't even heard her mention her much on the defensive end, getting deflections or steals like she's capable of doing. Still leading the ACC, or I think second in the ACC right now in steals. Hermosa pulled down the offensive rebound, but gets called for the walk. And Hermosa needs to continue to do what she did to end that first half. She hit a free throw jump shot. And that's some, a shot she's capable of knocking down. That's what the post players for Georgia Tech need to continue to do, get those chippies around the free throw line and in the paint to continue to be aggressive and give Georgia Tech a post presence. Straubman up over Kubai, Hermosa the rebound. Yeah, both Hermosa and Kubai have touch from the elbows, and those types of shots, as you know, are such a zone buster. It is, especially when your post players can do that. If they cannot knock down that, down that shot, and they're only capable of getting easy back baskets in the paint down low. That kind of makes you one dimensional. But when you can space out the floor and give your post player space to work, it's so important. Three pointer is good by McQueen, but wave it off. It's a three second violation instead. Hey, get out of the paint. I know that's what McQueen's saying. That three point shot looked good. It looked like she was going to knock down her second. The paint is not an art museum. You cannot stand and watch. <laughs> Here's Lewis trying to shake off that scoreless first half. Drops it down to Straumann up. Good vision by the senior. And, and that's the way to do it. Sometimes it's not always scoring, but if you can make plays and make things happen, that was a great look by Lewis to Straumann up for the easy lay-in. Mm. 
And right now, you see Georgia Tech trying to penetrate, get something out of this zone. McQueen tries another three and is not able to knock that down. But nice rebound by Mike Kaya. Well, she was waiting for the cavalry to come and then finds Cardoso filling the lane. I mean, I'm watching it and I wasn't even expecting that pass. I didn't even expect to see Cardoso to come into the screen. But that just shows her athleticism to run the floor at 6'7 and able to catch that pass down the lane. Nice pass by Mike Kaya. Out on the backcourt on Williams as we take a look. And Mike Kaya was facing pressure. She had Lorella Kuba just riding her. And then you got Cardoza creeps in behind Armosa and is able to catch that pass and get the lay in. The urge in that situation is to rush. <laughs> but held her ground as Cardoso blocks the attempt from Love. Another fast break opportunity for the Orange with the deficit down to nine. Matakahia goes coast to coast and makes it a seven point game. And we see the difference makers those two players can be for Syracuse. Cardoso, we said she didn't even have a block in that first half, gets her first block and is able to get it to Matakahia who's finishing with a nice lay in with the left. And Nell Fortner calls timeout with Syracuse opening the third quarter on a 6-0 run. Now, Quentin Hillsman not happy with Priscilla Williams but has to like this start to the third for his orange. Jackets by seven. Now they run rumbling for the orange. They've cut the deficit down to seven. Lodemar London has yet to enter the scoring column and figure that has to change if Georgia Tech wants to stay in front. Yeah, that has to change. They have to get her going or some way she's got to find a way to get herself going. Being aggressive, trying to get to the basket, maybe drawing a foul, getting to the free throw line. When you see that basketball go into the hoop, it can really enhance your confidence and make you more of an aggressive player when you're a scorer like she is. But she has been very quiet in this game. She has raised her scoring average in ACC play. On Straumana, pulls up and can't get it to fall. Rebound tap loose, but run down by Lewis. And that's just a, another tough shot. If you're not shooting well, shots like that are definitely not going to go down. No look to Williams. And who else? Monacahia, <laughs> a sixth assist for the graduate student. <laughs> Monacahia is just spectacular as a passer. That was another great look. Williams was wide open. I guess that was miscommunication between Fletcher and I believe maybe Lottner who was down there. It was just miscommunication to get a wide open shot like that underneath the basket. McQueen off the mark from three. Rebound, loose, Kubai has it. She is enveloped. And is a timeout called before the jump ball? Yes. Georgia Tech just able to get the timeout call. The arrow would have given it to Syracuse. But the Jackets 0 of 6 from the floor in the third quarter and a 13 point halftime lead has been whittled to five here in the third. Syracuse on an 8-0 run to start the second half. Getting a lot of them right in front of the rim. Yeah, it's just too easy. They're getting layups, and they came out of the halftime, and they've just been tremendous in this third quarter, getting easy looks. Monakai here making a nice pass right there to Williams, but they have cut a 13-point a lead that Georgia Tech had at halftime, now whittled down to five, and Georgia Tech is scrambling, trying to find points. Lawton and no good on the three. Volleyed around, Straubana has it, but falls to the floor, and that's a travel. And that's just good hustle. Right now, Syracuse looks like a team that is really coming with energy in this second half, and we talked about it. You know, the tail of two quarters, how Syracuse performed in that Notre Dame game. They were down 15 at halftime, and they can make these runs and come back in the second half. They are a great second-half team. Meanwhile, Tech has missed all seven of its shots here in the third. And if Georgia Tech can try and, you know, maintain and keep their lead, get some scoring going, that's going to be key because right now they are struggling and really can't get much in their half-court sets. Another turnover. And Kubai throws it away. And you can just see the pressure. Now Georgia Tech is starting to feel the pressure of not being able to score. That basket is seemingly looking smaller and smaller, and Syracuse is just continuing to come with aggressive half-court defense in their, in their zone defense. Remember, the Jackets shot 10 of 15 in that first quarter. Since then, 4 of 22. Anakahia plays it out wide to Williams. The fadeaway, short. Here's Fletcher. Very good guard rebounder. Puts on a burst, pulls up, and hits. 
That was just a nice move. A little hesitation before she shot that short range jump shot, but just impressive the, the body control and the way that she can control the tempo. Kiara Fletcher is the key leader as this point guard for Georgia Tech, and that was a big time shot to cut Syracuse's run. Senior has 14. Straumann up on the drive. There's Love with the rebound. Quick outlook. Jackets have numbers. McQueen running with Lawton in, and she finally gets on the board. Right. And something like that. A little two-man game between McQueen and Lawton. And, and Lawton is finally able to get her first two points. And once you see that basketball go in the basket, it gives you that confidence. And you could just see it right there. She's even talking more. Good run out, good pass out to McQueen. Nice dish to Lawton with the finish over my Monica here. Well, she is Finnish, and she can finish. <laughs> the junior from Helsinki. Kubai tips away the entry. Cardoso recovers. Lewis still searching for her first points, and there they come. And you called it right there. She goes in aggressively. We talked about she came into this second half making some nice passes, but finally is able to get on the board with her runner. Lightning and Lewis, last two possessions, they're able to score. She was 0 of 7, 14-point a game score from Chicago. Jackets by seven. And you can see this zone. It's looking like a matchup zone for Syracuse, but great rotation. Kubai swooping in. You notice that Cardoso came over, tried to block the attempt from Lawton, and, and that left Kubai unattended for the scoop and score. Right, and then that was great defense by Cardoso, but when she left, it let Kubai be wide open to get that offensive rebound and put back. Monacahi of the bucket, Quentin Hillsman the timeout for Syracuse as it's back down to a seven-point deficit. And Monacahi, she has that same leadership we talked about with Kiara Fletcher. She knew her team needed to get a bucket and she was able to capitalize and get one. And she's starting to get her offensive game going four or five from the field and with nine points in this game. And Lodnan still trying to be aggressive. Like you said, Cardoso comes over to help and you have Kubai who's able to collect and clean that one up. And then Monakai here with just the one foot runner spin. Ball rolls, she gets the bounce and she's able to finish. Man, that's just butter. <laughs> and Tiana Monakai has played Georgia Tech twice in her Syracuse career. And you talk about a tale of two games as a sophomore. She lit up the orange, uh, they lit up the jackets at the dome, had a career high 44 points, which was the most ever scored at the Dome by a Syracuse player, men's or women's. But the following year at McCamus Pavilion was held to five points. Yeah, I think I remember that game. We may have called that one, but they held her in check because that was the key component about that 44 points. What a spectacular performance she had as a, had as a sophomore. But she's continued, and she's just capable. We know she's capable of scoring, but... In her role this season, she doesn't need to score those points like that. She has just been consistent around 10 points a game, but her assist and able to dish it, that's what's been so important for the Syracuse ball club. A third foul on Jaldi Tomdi, contesting the jumper from Aaliyah Love. I need to give some love to Aaliyah Love. Eight first half points for the freshman. Yeah, she was consistent too. It was quiet, but she had eight points, was hustling, knocked down free throws, and she's continuing to do it here, able to draw that foul and knocks down another one. But this freshman, as I said before, she doesn't play like a freshman, and she can fill up a box score too if you just let her go, go out there and just play her game. Out of Kansas City, Kansas. She was ranked as high as number 64 nationally. And stretches the Tech lead to nine. And these are components that you need <laughs> with your ball club. Being able to knock down free throws. This is going to continue. This is going to be a close game. Syracuse is not going to lay down and die for anyone. And they're going to continue to try and cut into Georgia Tech's lead and try and capitalize going in the fourth quarter where we know they're impressive. We haven't been able to cut into it at the free throw line. You see the disparity in free throw attempts. Orange have yet to attempt one. It is a huge disparity. Georgia Tech's been there a few times and has just been able to capitalize shooting 10 to 13 from the free throw line. Now the Orange are last in the ACC in free throw percentage, but you'll take those freebies love over Cardoso, and that ties a career high now, 12 for Aaliyah Love. She looks confident, just goes right at Cardoso and is able to knock down that shot. And she may be getting in a rhythm or continuing the rhythm she had in the first half. 
Pick and roll, Cardoso diving through, draws the foul. And Love just dribbles and just shoots right over Cardozo. So that was just impressive. And she just looked confident. Looked like she was going to knock that down all along. And she's the type of stretch 3-4 that you want on your ball club. Can play multiple positions and can knock down shots like that. Cardoso, just a 53% foul shooter. And if we have to talk about anything that's, that's not great in her game, in her freshman season. It's her free throw shooting, which she could continue to improve upon. Her release doesn't look horrible, but she's not a great free throw shooter. So if you want to get somebody to the line for Georgia Tech, Cardozo is the one. Lead back out to double figures for the Jackets. Fletcher whips it across to Love. Another challenge shot. This one off the mark. Lewis Cardoso trying to fill the lane, but sniped out of there by Fletcher. And that was telegraphed. Lewis saw that from a mile away. I mean, Fletcher saw that from a mile away. And when Lewis passed it, she was just able to make that or get that steal. Woo! And hear that smack <laughs> here on the block. As Cardoso said, not this time, love. Uh -huh. I'm going to block this one. <laughs> Monica, yeah, the tight wow. rope and the reverse. On Fletcher. Fletcher was right on her and just the quickness and the vision just to scoop that back. Scoop that ball right over the basket and get that land. Monakaya continues to impress. Fletcher for three. And Nine Georgia point Tech. Syracuse deficit as we approach two minutes in the third quarter. Yeah, Georgia Tech in this second half can't really get a three point shot to fall, but Lewis was able to get that mid range jump shot to fall. And maybe that'll get her going. We said she can be streaky. But we know what she's capable of doing. She can score in bunches if she needs to and get and she gets hot. Fletcher had a team high, or rather a Lewis had a team high 21 when these teams met last year. She was this team's leading scorer with Monakaya being out. They needed some point production, and Lewis really stepped up, averaging about 17.6 points a game. Oh, Kubai with the up and under and with the offhand. Man. I mean, so impressive. We talk about her offensive game, how it's improved tremendously this season and that was just a great showing of that improvement with that footwork and that finish. That gives Kubai 15. Timeout Syracuse with the margin back to nine. Yeah, Lorella. Lorella Kubai, 15 points right now, eight rebounds, but she's just going on one with the nice up and under in the finish. And that's something in the past that she just hasn't been able to do. But she sees that she has a bit of a, mis a mismatch, and she capitalizes. You don't have Cardozo playing you, and the shot blocker is a little bit away. But she split the shot blocker and was still able to finish with the footwork. Seven double-doubles on the season for Lorella Kubai. And clearly there was some breakdown on defense that drew the ire of Quentin Hillsman. <laughs> he was like, let me call this timeout. But you know, you know he gets upset when he takes that mask off. He can't keep it off for long. But if he needs to tell his players something, the mask is coming off. And he is part of the <laughs> tier one testing protocol for the Orange. Nice. Lewis rocks it on Lawton. And And right now, this is going to be a critical play. You say another steal. Way to anticipate that pass by Armosa. It's like they knew that offensive set in the scouting report. Armosa was able to get to make that read and was able to get a key steal. Lawtonen peels around the screen, gets some daylight in the lane, and drops it in. And that's what she's capable of doing. She's seen the ball go into the hoop, and now she's getting more confidence. Lawtonen is the leading scorer for this Georgia Tech ball club, and she's going to need to score points if Georgia Tech wants to get a win. Now, Anxler responds with the lay-in. Anxler, it looked a little awkward, but she made it work, made it happen, and was able to get the bucket. Try to travel on Fletcher as she tried to dribble through the press. Yeah, we talked about this nice pass right there. Exler, she makes a nice move and is able to finish with the right. Nice spin move, splitting the D. Former New York Gatorade Player of the Year from New York City. Roosevelt Island, to be exact. 
She's an Islander. <laughs> She's an Islander. She's a hard-nosed, tough player, averaging a double-double off the bench for this Syracuse team, and she's just pretty consistent. And she lets it fly on the pick and pop for three. She's like, I told you I could knock down that three. And Get that was confident. a big bucket because it narrows the deficit to six as we go to the fourth quarter in Atlanta. So the late flurry by the junior Emily Engstler, Georgia Tech. Was outscored by seven in that third quarter, but they head to the final quarter up by six here in Atlanta. Andrew Demetra, Fallon Stokes back with you. Set to start the fourth quarter from Atlanta. Go figure, the team that's shooting 53% has trailed this entire game. Yeah, that, that's pretty crazy. I guess it just shows how hot Georgia Tech was in that first quarter. But since then, Syracuse has shot the ball well and has played solid defense to get back into this basketball game. We see they're 6 of 11 behind the three-point line and they've been able to capitalize. And now you're seeing players for them that have been quiet starting to step up, like Lewis, um, Anxler, she's been playing well, hit that big three to end the third quarter. So this fourth quarter, we know they're very capable of being a great fourth quarter team if they're down. Syracuse 10 of 14 from the floor in that third quarter. Cardoso drops it down the shoot and reverse off the mark by Ensler. It was a nice pass by Cardoso to Ensler, but Ensler wasn't able to finish with the layup. Georgia Tech led by 15 from Kubai, 14 from Fletcher. And it's Kubai to Fletcher. Cardoso the rebound. And that's a shot that Kiara Fletcher is very capable of knocking down. Just hadn't been able to find it in the last few minutes. Over the top, Cardoso gets tomahawked. I believe that's going to go on Kubai. And it will. And I get trying to get it out there, but that was an unnecessary foul. That's a foul that Lorella Kubai doesn't need to commit. Just let her catch it, play strong defense. You guys had the double team with Armosa and Kubai on her. They should have just let that one play out. And Armosa tips away the inbound jump ball. The arrow gives it to Tech. And that was nice hustle right there by the freshman boy. After Lorella Kubai was able to get a deflection of hand on it, boy's able to fall on it and get the jump ball to regain the possession for Georgia Tech. And this is going to be a critical possession to start this fourth quarter the right way. Syracuse coming back with that full court pressure. Georgia Tech has Anaya Boyd on for some minutes. Her first action of the second half. Processes the zone. Touch pass. Kubai. Drives on our Mo or, uh, Cardoso and draws the foul. And that's a, that's a way to be aggressive. I was looking back. She had the open shot at the free throw line. Lorella Kubai did and didn't take it. Decided not to take it. Cardoso was playing her and came up. And then she decided to drive. Goes head to head with three Syracuse players surrounding her and still able to draw the foul. Great hustle and aggressiveness by Lorella Kubai to drive that basketball. And she's got the frame physically where she could overpower you in the post, but her game once she gets on the block is really crafty. A lot of shoulder fakes, pivots, and able to draw some contact like she did there on Cardoso. It's her first foul. It is. I mean, she has the size to pound and be physical down there, but she prefers to be more of a finesse player around that basket down low. And you can see that with the footwork, the improvement, the work she's put in over the summer and the last few years. But she's been able to capitalize and be aggressive in the paint. This is both free throws, though. Yeah. Off the skip. Straubman up. One possession game. Wow. The Orange trailed by as many as 18 in the first quarter, and now it's down to three. Fletcher fouled in the backcourt. Pretty amazing how the three-point shot can get you right back into a basketball game. And Stramina able to get that pass. Nice look by Monakai at to her in the corner, and she's able to knock down that three big-time shot. She will head to the bench, but that three by the senior from Riga Latvia gives her 1,000 points for her career on the nose. Yeah, I think she was seven away before this game, so very impressive for the senior to get to 1,000 points. Impressive for any player that can make and reach that accomplishment. Fletcher threads the needle to Kubai. And that's what they need. That's what they were missing in that third quarter. They were becoming too stagnant, no movement in their offensive sets, and that was a great cut by Luella Kubai to get that pass. Nice look by Kiara Fletcher. 
Fletcher coming off a career high eight assists the last time out versus Miami. Manakahia's pass was stuffed. Thanks to the recoveries. Ropes it to Lewis. Lewis takes it in deep, swatted by Kubai, but they call Kubai for the foul. And Lewis did a great job on that penetration. She knew Kubai was riding her. Lorella Kubai is capable of playing defense. Very upset by that call. But Lewis used her body to try and shield and keep Kubai off just enough to get that basketball up. Looks like from a distance, it looked like ball, but I think the body contact was a little too much and the referee was able to make that call. That was a nice decision, nice play by the senior. Third foul on Kubai, but Syracuse has not been able to buy a basket at the free throw line. Just 64% as a team this year. And, and now 0 of 4 in this game. And we were just talking about they weren't getting any free throws. They get a couple or get a few and they can't capitalize and knock them down. Well, they're getting the attempts. Yeah. <laughs> they just need to get the makes. They need to get the makes. Yeah. Hermosa rolling, scooping, scoring. And that was a nice offensive set. Great job by Fletcher to acknowledge and see Hermosa had a one-on-one -on -one play or was one-on-one -on -one position down low, and she's just able to take it and get the layup. And then get her hand in the passing lane there. Fletcher taking it coast to coast, and she draws the foul. Maybe she just needed a second wig, because it's so crazy. When Kiara Fletcher puts those jets on and you see her become more aggressive, that's when you see great things start to happen for Georgia Tech. And in the last two possessions, she had a nice pass, made a nice decision to see that matchup with Armosa, had a one-on-one -on -one play in the paint, and Armosa was able to capitalize. She's able to get the steal deflection on the other end. It comes down and is able to draw the foul. Now 15 for the senior to go along with seven rebounds. Four assists, and Georgia Tech back up by eight. And this is going to be a hard, a hard blow. You know Syracuse is going to give you their best in this fourth quarter and try and go as hard as they can, but Kara Fletcher able to knock down both of those free throws, so to give Georgia Tech a little bit more cushion in this game with their lead. Trust us when we tell you, no lead is safe against Syracuse this year in the fourth quarter. They have been the fourth quarter queens. Cardoso catches the deflection and lays it in. And then every time, if you have a jump ball play like that where it's a deflection, Cardoso's going to get it every time at 6-7. Easy lay-in for the freshman. Almost four minutes into our final quarter. Kubai measuring up Angsler. Wriggles underneath her and lays her in. And Angsler. She doesn't have the right size to guard Lorella Kubai, but Lorella Kubai has been capitalizing on that. Oh, and Hermosa with the stuff on Cardoso. And where did that come from? We know she's capable. Hermosa, a great defensive player in her own right, but she's able to get a big time block against the 6'7 Cardoza. 14th block of the year by Hermosa, but she does that on the leading shot blocker in the ACC. Right. Now reach in on Manakahia. And that was a great job by Lodnan. Continue to keep her dribble working. Manakaya. Manakaya gets called for the foul. But you can't have those little ticky tack ticky tack fouls that far away from the basket for Syracuse if they want to continue to get back in this game. The Orange also out of fouls to give this quarter. Orange had closed to three. Since swelled back to nine for the Yellow Jackets. Dubai draws the double. Rotated to Love. Love as Williams hits the floor, knocks it in. And we talked about that matchup, Williams versus Love, the two freshmen, highly taught it recruits who are very talented, but Love was able to capitalize, get that uh, baseline shot to fall for Georgia Tech. Nifty finish, meanwhile, by Manakahia. Graduate student has 13. But the Orange still chasing nine past the midway mark of our fourth quarter. And Manakai is so crafty. When Syracuse needs a bucket, she finds a way to get them one. And that was a nice finish on that last possession for Syracuse. But Georgia Tech still trying to make something work in their half-court sets. And <laughs> Lorella Kubai making it work with the fadeaway 
jump shot. I mean, she is really locked in trying to win this game and is really playing hard to try and get her team past the finish line. Well, she has just had her way with Engsler in that low post matchup, that six fourth quarter points by Kubai. Engsler misfires and Fletcher bolts out of there with it. Has Hermosa over the shoulder. Two more for Hermosa and Georgia Tech up 13. No, and that's the type of play Based on how Kiara Fletcher started to get it going, making some nice passes, getting Armosa back in, Kubai, and you just see she is continuing to show her presence. Nice shot by Monica here. <laughs> She is trying to keep the orange in it as Quentin Hillsman calls time. But with 4.02 to play, Georgia Tech remains in front. Stay with us for our finish from Atlanta. Lorella Kubai, known for her rebounding, but tonight she's been known for her bucket spell. Oh, yeah, she's been known for her buckets, even knocking down a three-point shot in that first quarter, but has 21 points in this game, and that's just an impressive stat line. I didn't even know where it came. She just had 15, and now she's at 21. But she has been impressive, especially in this fourth quarter, hitting some big-time buckets and really giving Georgia Tech a post presence. 21 points and nine rebounds. She is... <laughs> a big time rebounder leading the ACC in rebounding currently and just showing why she is sh uh, continuing to have an all ACC performance this season. 21 ties a career high which you set last year versus Wake Forest. Of course earlier this year she had a 20 rebound game versus Clemson. First yellow jacket with a 20 board game in more than 25 years. Oh, that's impressive. Hermosa resets. Hands off Lawton and had it chopped off her knee and it's out of bounds to Syracuse. So Syracuse down 11, 3.36 to play. It's a steep hill to climb, but like we said, the Orange have been fourth quarter queens this year. Sunday, they outscored Notre Dame by 19 in the fourth quarter. The game prior, 15 in the fourth quarter over Pitt. So they have eaten up some sizable deficits over the final 10 minutes. And they have, and that was all in the month of January. So that's pretty impressive. They've been getting after it. A really good fourth quarter team, but it's been their defense and they've been able to knock down shots. You see in three of those games, they held their opponents to single digits in the fourth quarter. And now a technical foul called on Quentin Hillsman. Uh-oh. I believe I saw, I saw the technical call. <laughs> Yeah, and he's telling his team to come over here so he can talk with them. But I guess just trying to get better understanding. Well, now Fordner seeking an explanation. I, I thought Coach Q was a little hot under the collar after <laughs> that last turnover and <laughs> shot attempt for his team, so. Okay, foul on Aaliyah Love. And is there still a technical foul? I thought that was the call on the floor. Yeah, it seems like they're trying to get it together, get some clarity. The Candler, Billy Smith, Rod Creech, our officiating crew tonight. And I'm going to take a look at it. But I guess they just want to get it right. You know, the game gets stopped due to a foul they called so far on Aaliyah Love. But not knowing what else is coming after the refs review the footage to see what all took place. As we said, Georgia Tech trying to extend a five-game winning streak, which is its longest in conference play since 2012. And should they hold on tonight, it would be the Yellow Jackets' longest regular season ACC win streak ever. Yeah, no, and that's impressive. You know, this six-game win streak they've been able to accomplish, especially all the ups and downs they've gone through as a team in the last month or so. And, you know, you could just see right now, Aaliyah Love is really upset on the sideline. I'm not sure what the final call is going to be, but she's really upset that she was the one that got called with that foul. Uh, but Georgia Tech has been playing tremendous for the month of January, and they've really shown 
or have carried on from a season ago where they were playing extremely well. And like we said, every game last season was cut short due to the pandemic, but they've capitalized with bringing in this new group of freshmen, um, losing Francesca Pond, but then having P players like Kiara Fletcher, Lorella Kubai, and Lottnan really step up this season and show some junior and senior leadership for this team. And they've done well, tremendous. Cardoso off the inbound makes it a nine-point game. And we're elevated from court side, so usually we get the I know. final verdict from our crew <laughs> after a review. As best I can gather, they were reviewing to see whether there may have been a, a Maybe contact dead ball technical on Love. Instead, it was just a common foul. And with that layup by Kubai, it's a new career high, 23 for the senior. And Lorella Kubai continue to be aggressive. Just a nice, easy layup. I mean, you can't say more about her play. This is a big-time game for her. And if Georgia Tech can capitalize and finish this game strong, another big-time win. That bucket was actually from Hermosa, so Kubai stays stuck at 21. She will gladly watch her teammate from Victoria, Spain, stretch the lead back to 11. <laughs> Monacahia can't roll that home. Great defense by Lottnick. And we've talked about how quiet she's been this game offensively, but she has had to play defense against Monacaya. That's not an easy task. She's had to run around with her, try and limit the assists that she's dishing and scoring. So that was a huge assignment for the junior. They had reached double figures in nine straight games. Shot clock winding down. Kubai fires across. Hermosa, no good. When Engstler gets bumped, and whistle there on Kubai. <laughs> yeah, Lorella Kubai a little too anxious trying to play defense and gets a little too close to Engstler, but that's not a good uh, foul you want to commit. But that was a nice pass by Lorella Kubai to Armosa. That two-man game, I say they may be two of the best in the business as post players able to dish it to each other and give each other good looks. Another deep catch by Cardoso. What do you do about that? Armosa looks like she was front and had good positioning on, our, on Cardoso and still able to capitalize and, and get, the ba get the basket. Ball loose. Syracuse, though, can't convert the turnover. Stays with Tack, but trying to ratchet up the pressure here in the final minute, 27. They are, and they're capable. They can make runs. Georgia Tech knows they have to handle Syracuse's full court pressure and get out of this. They cannot commit turnovers. Fletcher going for the home run ball out in front of Kubai, who's able to save it to Lawton. Now Fordner pleading for timeout. It rolls loose to Syracuse, and now a foul called. You see Nelson, I was calling timeout. Now let's see who's the foul on. Yeah, that's that is crazy. Coach Fordner was yelling, looking directly at the ref, trying to call a timeout while Lawton was tied up on the floor. And Lawton is fortunate she gets the foul call. Uh, Coach Fortner to take that, but she was upset that she didn't get her call. And now Quentin Hillsman doesn't like the foul called on Williams because it also puts Georgia Tech in the bonus. It does. And great hustle by Lorella Kubai to chase down that basketball. It looked like, you know, Syracuse is going to capitalize on getting another possession with no time running off the clock. But in that situation, Kubai was able to guide the ball back in and Lightning was able to clean it up. Lawton in two for two as Love subs in for Hermosa. And this is going to be interesting to see what Syracuse can do. Right now, they're down a 11 points, but they need to try and score quickly. Not much time left in this game. Oh, that was an alley-oop for Monacahia to Cardoso. Man, Monacahia is just a great passer, but if you have a player like Cardozo, you can make it happen. And right there, another turnover, great pressure by Syracuse. They're able to force McQueen into that travel on the sideline. Not a good decision by the freshman. Georgia Tech, you can't have the panic settle in trying to break that press. You can't. Keep your composure. They've done a good job in this game prior to the last couple of turnovers. And Kubai reaches up and taps away the lob to force the turnover. Man, her defensive presence, her hands, and she gets deflection. She's so active as a post player. And that was just another great play by Lorella Kubai to cause that turnover.
Kira Fletcher now at the line. <laughs> Trying to salt this away for Nell Fortner and the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, you got Coach Hillsbit on the sideline giving like the side face or the side eye look like, where did that even come from? Where was the foul? <laughs> <laughs> but Kiera Fletcher would surely take him to capitalize. <laughs> now these are two teams still very much in the conversation. They're looking at the NCAA tournament. Georgia Tech a net rating of 22 entering today. Syracuse 36. Yeah, very in impressive. We know Syracuse early in the season, they were in the top 25. I think they got knocked out after they had that loss against Clemson in overtime. But Georgia Tech starting to get votes for the top 25, and this will be another impressive win if they can get it to try and get more votes. And Kubai forces another steal. Man, she is, if she, she needs to be on the ACC all defensive team as well when we talk about an all ACC candidate, offensively, defensively as a rebounder. She is just a spectacular asset for this Georgia Tech ball club. Tremendous leader and her game, you can't even speak. It speaks volumes for itself and how she's played in this stretch in January and during this six game win streak. McQueen to beat the shot clock. Now these teams both chasing Louisville and North Carolina State like the rest of the ACC, but Georgia Tech really staking its claim for third place in the league. And a frustrating night for the Orange. Georgia Tech earns a sixth straight win. Now our final score tonight from McCamish Pavilion behind a career-high tying 21 from Loretta Kubai. Georgia Tech 76 and Syracuse 63. Yeah, this was a big time game. We said this was going to be a battle between these two teams, but Georgia Tech was able to capitalize and get a big time win. Final words of respect exchanged between our head coaches tonight. Nell Fortner's team trying to protect its home floor tonight. They do that, never trailing and holding Syracuse at every stretch of the way. Once again, our final score, Tech 76, Syracuse 63. For Fallon Stokes and our entire ACC Network crew from Atlanta and to Demetra, so long. Thanks for watching this presentation of ACC Network Women's Basketball. Have a great night, everyone.